How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's PSG ruining football again. 1,500 players at their disposal last time out. Today, slightly fewer. They've got rid of some names. They've sold some players for some big money. Did they retain the Champions League? Did they pass financial fair play to get into the Champions League? Let's find out together, shall we? So yes, folks, we are back here at PSG and Pochettino, good news, everyone. He is still manager at the club, still four years left on his current deal. Although under the negatives, he is deeply concerned about the club's finances and feels they could impact his future at the club. That's weird. <laughs> and the reason it's weird is because over the last year, since you were last here, they have sold 1.72 billion pounds worth of players. Now, none of these players have left for super massive monumental sums of money. I can only assume that's because there is more supply than there is demand for players. And so they need to get rid of a load of players, PSG. Obviously, the top European clubs need to sign players of all the money that they've amassed over the last year of not having anyone on their wages. And as a result of just the sheer quantity of players, there isn't much bidding going on. You can see here some of the biggest deals that have happened. Uh, Newcastle feature fairly frequently. They picked up Saka and Reese James for a combined just over 70 million. I mean, in any other save game, that would be some of the most ridiculous kind of dealings ever. Uh, as I scroll through here, you can see some of the players. Of course, they have sold quite a few players here to the point where I honestly, I can't go through these and do this all justice. But if I just select them all, just to give you an idea of how many players we're talking about, it looks like a lot. There's still over a thousand players left at PSG. Um, so yeah, there is plenty of work left for them to do in terms of getting rid of players from their squad. And I know someone's going to mention it. Jack, who is Quentin Brunet? Um, well, he's been signed as part of a swap deal with Monaco. So the player he was involved in a swap deal with was Gabriel Barbosa for 2.4 million plus Quentin Brunet. I mean, Quentin Brunet is very, very good. I'd probably take Gabby Barbosa for £2.4 million. I mean, that kind of gives you an idea of just how cheap PSG are having to flog some of their players. In terms of how they've done in the league and the Champions League, we'll look at that first before we look at their squad. In the league, they've won it. They didn't go completely unbeaten, though. You can see here, they ended up on 97 points. They did suffer one defeat against Lille. And the top goal scorer in the division was actually Alexander Isaac, who was signed for £20.5 million by Lyon. Uh, he picked up 21 goals in 37. Elsewhere, Gabriel Balboza, who we've already talked about, had a really good season. De Bruyne leading the way when it comes to assists. He has 11 to his name. I've just clicked on his profile and I think the game's crashed again. Okay, it hadn't crashed, it just lagged for like two minutes straight. Here is Kevin De Bruyne, aged 31. He's been a star player in the league, 32 matches played, 6 goals, 11 assists. Definitely looks like this year PSG have managed to kind of sort out their team selection scenario. Um, over in the Club World Cup, they won in the final against Tottenham. It's kind of interesting to note if we look at the stages here for the competition that just wrapped up. Um, the fact that lots of the teams that you would not normally expect to make it into the knockout stages made it to the knockout stages. I mean, Jean Buck of South Korea beat Bayern Munich 4-2 and uh, Chivas beat Man City 3-0. So uh, shout out to Chivas. Of course, Man City, just as a reminder, down in the championship. So uh, yeah, not going great for them. Also, they've got Mourinho as their manager. Yeah, we'll go back to England in a moment. But just to return to PSG's season, the good news, if you're a PSG fan, I suppose, is they managed to pass financial fair play. Yeah, love love FFP, me. Um, they made it into the Champions League. You might be wondering, did they retain the Champions League? Of course they did. It was the battle of the baddies in the final. Uh, it was Newcastle v PSG, a fairly even game. You can see here the team that PSG lined up with for this game to stay getting goal, Carrasco, at left back, you know what? That's not the weirdest team selection I've seen this team do, so I'm not going to question it. Van Dijk, Varan, Kimmich, Casemiro, Fernandez, De Bruyne, uh, Salah, Mbappe, and Lewandowski. As for Newcastle's team, uh, Lucas Moura and Danny Ings up front. Kessie, Tillemans, Saka. They've got Raheem Sterling. They signed for him for 11 million. I mean, 
But I, I feel like Newcastle really have abused the situation they found themselves in here, just judged by this team. They've got Grinier, Rudiger, Mendes, uh, Reese James, and then they've got Kalo Navas as well. The, the PSG OG, um, he left for 5.25 million during last season. Should we go over to England and see what's been going on there? Where, of course, last time out, Newcastle spent a fair amount of money on PSG players. That trend has continued. Um, they basically exclusively signed players from PSG, uh, with the exception of Fabio Carvalho. Uh, they picked up Jamie Vardy for 500k. That's a pretty good bargain buy. Kurt Zuma for less than 10 million. Of course, PSG forced into this weird situation where they just have to sell everyone. And, uh, well, looking at the Premier League table, Newcastle champions, Leeds finished second and got a Champions League spot, although they were a long, long way behind Newcastle. Chelsea and Southampton rounding off the top four. Uh, Manchester United have recovered a little bit this year. Of course, they will have signed some players from PSG. They picked up Nathan Wood and John Stones and then a selection of other players, which includes Mark Noble on a free. I do get the sneaking suspicion that besides Newcastle, not many of these teams who lost a lot of players have actually replaced all that many of the players that they've lost. I mean, Tottenham there actually have signed a fair few. But for example, teams like Watford, West Ham, I mean, Wolves here, you can just see the kind of players they're bringing in, not very good. Um, I guess their overall first team size is big, but as is demonstrated by the fact they finished down in 17th. Wolves signed a load of players not from PSG. Those players aren't good enough for the Premier League. Basically, all the Premier League quality players play for one club. And uh, I imagine it's doing weird stuff with the game, to be honest. Over in La Liga, you're wondering it. I'm wondering it. Did Elche retain the title? No. Uh, the status quo has returned. Uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona finishing top two. Real Madrid ran away with things. You can see a selection of the players they were able to pick up for reasonably cut prices from PSG. Um, yeah, they've done quite well. Barcelona ended up finishing second. In Syria, did Juve defend their title? Of course they did. Lazio and Inter not too far behind. Over in the Bundesliga, um, I mean, you can have a look at things here. Hoffenheim winning the league for a second consecutive season. Uh, meanwhile, the likes of Bayern, Dortmund and Leipzig slowly creeping back up the table. I imagine a lot of the, the bigger clubs who obviously their teams were gutted out the most when PSG went crazy. We're going to see them kind of return to normal. Uh, Deli Ali, by the way, top goal scorer in the league. Uh, I'm not going to ask any more questions. Just have a little bit of a deeper look at the Champions League for people wondering how this has affected things. Uh, PSG, of course, finished top of their group in Group B. They did fine. Elsewhere, Elche finished fourth alongside Celtic missing out. Burnley didn't make it through to the knockout stages. Sorry, Burnley fans. Brentford didn't either. Uh, obviously, Newcastle made it to the final. They qualified as the best team in their group. I imagine they probably are on paper the second best team to PSG. Um, and I mean, across the board, there's just lots of weird surprises. Although Juve still doing quite well. I feel like they've recovered reasonably well. Last year, they still had a lot of players in on loan. Looking at their current squad, um, they've spent... A decent whack of money, 121 million, but definitely added some real quality for a pretty reasonable amount of money. So just to take a little bit of a deeper look, I suppose, at PSG squad, you can see here Joshua Kimmich played the most games for them this year with 55 games. Then it was Kevin De Bruyne, Mbappe, Van Dijk, Ruben Diaz, Lewandowski and Salah. Certainly looks like they managed their squad a little bit better this year. Uh, as was mentioned in the comment section, in League uh, you are restricted to four non-EU players, so that probably impacted their ability to field a team last year when we saw all the weirdness going on. You can see as we scroll through, though, in general, they've rotated the team a little bit. I mean, of their total squad, they have used 62 players, which, I mean, 62 players used in a season sounds like a hell of a lot until you realise... The 644 players still at the club in the first team. That is, of course, pretending that the second team and the under-19s don't exist. Um, a lot of players in this youth team setup are not of the age to play in the youth team. They've just been demoted down. Uh, I feel sorry for some of the older players here who have unfortunately been done dirty and obviously haven't been able to secure their escape from the PSG prison. But as we scroll through here, you can see that they have obviously got a load of really, really good young players here at PSG. Because I gave them a lot of the players with the best potential, 
It seems like they are actually keeping hold of a lot of these younger players. I'm wondering how much their development is impaired by the fact none of them are getting any game time. We could have a whole generation of players where the players just never reach their potential because well, they were all wrestling for the attention of the coaches over at PSG. Naturally, they aren't going to keep all of the players that I'm showing here in their team in the coming years. So I expect to see plenty more sales happening. And, well, the world of football slowly returning to a normal of sorts. That's, of course, completely ignoring the fact that we have teams like Atleti, who were relegated year one, Liverpool and Man City, and Arsenal, I think it was, were relegated from the Premier League. I expect those teams to bounce back, but... I guess a question is going to be, can they climb up? And also, how are PSG going to continue to manage this squad situation? I've just remembered that Pochettino is a bit concerned about the financial position at the club. Uh, let's go peek at the finances. I thought that with all their sales, you know, 1.2 billion or 1.72 billion even, only 0.5 billion off. Um, it's not that big of a number. I thought, I thought they'd be okay financially, but evidently that's not the case. So I've taken a quick peek at the finances here at PSG. Um, the financial status is in debt. They're only in debt by £166 uh, million. Pounds. It's not that much. Their wage budget is now at £6 million pounds a week, which I assume is the highest that the game is meant to have it at. That seems like a very weird number for it to get dropped down to. Just as a reminder, like last episode, when we first started, it was over £100 million. Pounds. Uh, so, yeah, if Pochettino has an objective to work within the budgets, he's going to have to work quite hard. Uh, meanwhile, there is a transfer budget of £905 million, pounds, uh, which is interesting, of course, because the club have absolutely no money, of course, as we already know is going to be the case. They've miraculously had some sponsorship deals appear to help out with the finances. No doubt they are going to continue to help the club uh, avoid any FFP issues. Looking at the club's historic landmarks as well, the ownership group haven't scaled down the funding just yet. So fingers crossed they're going to be financially fine for a little while yet. As, soon, as long as they keep winning, I'm sure they'll do OK. I'm assuming that they're just going to be the best team in the world forever. I mean, whatever managers kind of come in after Pochettino, if Pochettino indeed ever leaves... They're going to have to do a pretty impressive job to... Uh, I've just clicked on the squad screen whilst I've had it myself as a manager to look at the finance. The game's crashed again. The game, the game will not load from this point here. Like The screen will just stay blank because it can't load all the players. It's Has it loaded? I've, mm, it's, I've tried to sort by wages and it's frozen again. So I've managed to look at the squad screen whilst I'm added as manager. I couldn't do this last time. It kept crashing. I guess because we've got rid of a few hundred players, it's slightly better now. You can get an idea here of kind of the overall ability of the players in the team. Even if I kind of scroll halfway down this list, you've still got players like Saliba, uh, Hervin Lozano, Raul Jimenez, all players who are pretty good in football manager terms. Also, I've noticed down here we've got the likes of Tonali and Kulisevsky who uh, obviously they all want to leave the club. And in fact, in Kulazevsky's case, he's already leaving the building. I want to do something dangerous. I want to try and load up the club dynamics. Okay, uh, there's players unhappy. There's Okay, there's quite a few players unhappy. The atmosphere is not great. The cohesion is pro problematic. I mean, that's not entirely surprising. There's 260 players in the core social group. Oh, am I, I'm going to click on the hierarchy. I want to know who's the leader of a pack of the best players in the world. Right. Oh, is that... I think that's meant to say leaders there, but it just doesn't work. Right. Uh, Mbappe, Messi, and Thiago Silva are the leaders of the team, it seems. Yep, yeah, they are. And then Wijnaldum is in the secondary group, alongside Neymar, Marquinhos, Paredes. Uh, it's all just the players who start at PSG, actually, who were towards the top. Uh, I'm going to attempt to scroll down here. It's like a pyramid scheme. I feel sorry for the other players and uh, also the players who fall into the influential players list here. I've just realised anyone above this point of in influential players is a highly influential player. That's a lot of players and a lot of these are undoubtedly going to be unhappy. I mean, this can only cause a load of issues for the manager, can't it? So just looking at player happiness across the board, uh, everyone is kind of very poor. Oh gosh, this is so laggy to scroll through. I mean, you can see here the issue that players have. They're basically concerned with the issues at the club. It seems like it's an ongoing spiral. 
I'm kind of impressed by how many are satisfied with the training and their playing time. That's really weird. I would have thought it'd be more of an issue. I mean, there is the odd player who's not that happy. But in general, I actually thought the morale was going to be way, way lower here. Um, we kind of joke about football manager being morale manager. But currently, a PSG team with abysmal dressing room atmosphere is winning everything. Of course, the fact they have all the best players in the world probably is a reason behind that. Right, you know what? I've looked through the club as best I can whilst I've added myself as a manager. It's a laggy mess. The players aren't as unhappy as I thought they were. The dressing room atmosphere is abysmal. Everyone is highly influential. Everyone is crying. There are still hundreds of players left at the club. Let's go and see how many are left in another year's time, shall we? Okay, folks, we are back. End of season three, PSG. Still the champions of France. Yeah, uh, they're, they're still a very, very good team, although they did lose a game again. This time it was with St. Etienne. And for the first time, I think, in all these videos, I'm noticing Erlen Haaland. Of course, Erlen Haaland did get transferred to PSG. I feel like he's not popped up. Maybe I've just been blind to it, but I've not noticed him kind of playing for them. I mean, you can see here, first year he played four games and scored one goal. Last year he played 18, but only scored eight. This year... He's been a, a bit more of a significant player in their first team. Elsewhere, Mo Salah and Donnarumma are really high up in the ratings. Kevin De Bruyne continuing to play absolutely superbly. I suppose the question is, could PSG win the Champions League for a third consecutive year? And the answer to that question is, they could. Now, I don't want to give the PSG ownership any ideas, but basically what I've learned is, if they want to win the Champions League... They might want to just buy everyone. I mean, it seems like the best possible strategy. Looking at the team that played the final, Haaland playing up top. I wonder if Lewandowski's retired. That would kind of make sense. Alfonso Davies in at left back. Uh, I've noticed a bit of a changing around of players. Interesting to note, Hakimi still playing his spot in at right back. Um, there is certainly a few younger players being given chances. Over on the bench, Livramento, Bruno Fernandes, Harry Kane, Mariba, Renan, Wurtz, Mane, Gavi, Gvardiol, Casemiro, Makoko. That's quite a star-studded bench, isn't it? So they've won everything yet again. I want to see how many players they sold this year. Last year, they sold a lot of players. You might be sat there thinking, wow, that's one big transfer at the top. No, that is so many little transfers that it just looks like a solid bar because that's what's happened. Uh, this year, they sold 1.4 billion pounds worth of players. The biggest sale was Jose Gaia to Zebra, Locatelli, Moise Keane, and also Marcos Llorente all also made moves uh, to Juventus, who of course they beat in the final. It does seem like Juve are one of the teams that have kind of profited from this situation the best. They have won, uh, well, Syria the last three years in a row. It's worth noting, despite PSG dominance, League 1 hasn't climbed up in the rankings, where of course they won the league. As for the other leagues, well, over in England, uh, Newcastle won the league again. Uh, Liverpool were promoted, so congratulations to them. Uh, Man City were promoted and uh, went, well, went straight back up and did quite well. They finished back in third. And Arsenal, who were promoted, where did they finish? They finished in 14th. So all the Premier League teams who got relegated came back up. I can only assume that's because the likes of Man City, despite losing a lot of players, were able to reinvest some money. And uh, yeah, indeed, that was the case. £173 million spent by them, including £62 million on Ivan Toney. Uh, and Ivan Toney, who, well, avoided being signed by PSG. He must have just fallen outside some of the parameters I set for the players that they would get. I'm not sure if for £51 million, it's the best investment, but he's probably a pretty big reason why, upon their promotion, they've managed to finish third. Uh, Newcastle, by the way, still the best team. Only spent £10 million this year. They've stopped dealing quite as much with PSG compared to some of the other teams. Now, disappointingly, it seems the Elche dream is over. Of course, they won the league uh, well, a couple of years ago now. They've now finished just outside the relegation zone. Normal C seems to have returned to Spain and Italy with the typical teams towards the top. Although, you might notice that Atletico Madrid are missing. And that's because Atleti are stuck in the second division with Frank Lampard as their manager. I'm going to go ahead and say that's maybe one of the reasons they've not been promoted. 
Um, it's worth noting that I haven't got the second division loaded just because the game was taking so long to continue still. You might remember I told you it took 30 hours to do one season. How long did it take to do three seasons, you might wonder? Um, it's taken over three days. To put that into perspective, I can load up all the leagues and normally simulate a season in about an hour. So whilst things have been getting slightly quicker as PSG have got rid of their players, it's still quite slow. Over in Germany, by the way, Hoffenheim winning the league for a third successive season. Hoffenheim have just become the dominant force, it appears. And they've continued to sign players from PSG even this year. Bodu, Tenali, Harvey Barnes and uh, Vencedor. I hope I've done that name some justice, uh, all signed alongside Morato for £22.5 million. Who is Morato? I feel like I'm not familiar with this guy. He plays for Benfica, um, was not a player that was signed by PSG. He's a very, very good talent, though. He's decent. I'm surprised I haven't come across him before. I'm now sat looking at him thinking maybe I'd have had you in a save game before and I've just forgotten about it. That'd be awkward. You guys will let me know in the comments. Loads of you watch all the Let's Plays. Remember them better than I do, apparently. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is after the final part, which will be part three of this mini experiment, I will be sharing a save file at the end of it. So if you want to go through and kind of sift through all the stuff in this save game yourself, there's probably loads of different things that have been affected that I've simply not accounted for. As you can imagine, when there's 1,500 players involved in things, it's kind of difficult to keep on track of them all. Uh, in terms of the Ballon d'Or winners, though, you can see here Chiesa actually won it in 2021. That's probably because, obviously, PSG didn't play a consistent 11 for that first year where they rotated things around and had Skriniar out on the left wing. Jonas Wind, by the way, finished second in the Ballon d'Or that year uh, with his 15 goals for Chelsea. Um, I suspect he hasn't featured in the Ballon d'Or voting since, and for the last two years, it's been dominated largely by PSG players. Chiesa did sneak in again most recently, but Lewandowski finally getting a Ballon d'Or. Really, really good to see him picking one up. Um, I did speculate that maybe he's retired due to the fact that Haaland's been playing more. He could have equally just been dropped from the first team. And that does seem to be the case. He's played four games, got two goals. They've not got rid of him yet. And well, as for the World Team of the Year, I'll be honest, it's a complete bloody mess. In the first year, it's just a random amalgamation of players. I mean, David Raya has entered, entered into the team. Max Aaron's at right back for Tottenham. Uh, Jonas Wind, again, appearing up top. There's just lots and lots of weird players. In 2022, the World Team of the Year kind of started to be dominated by PSG, although Deli Ali is in there. So Deli Ali, if you're watching from home, sign for Hoffenheim. You'll get into the World Dream 11 if PSG sign everyone else. Uh, Nuno Menge and also, as you can see here, Max Aaron's featuring at left back and right back, both playing in the Premier League. And the most recent kind of media Dream 11, you can see here Onana, Koundé and Savic all playing uh, for Real Madrid, of course, the left back and right back of Newcastle featuring and uh, Deli Ali continuing to be a prominent figure here. He has got 18 goals, 20 goals and then 10 goals. Not bad for £4.1 million. Also, Danny Ings up top. Yeah, I mean, Newcastle really have been the big benefactor, I feel like, of this entire scenario. So all in all, PSG continuing to do quite well. They have still got a ridiculously large squad. You know, three years in, I really thought they would have, well, probably sold everyone. That really hasn't been the case. They still have a squad of 786 players, which is absolutely ridiculous three years in. Of course, there are a lot of players here who are going to have contracts expiring in the coming years. At the end of season five is going to be where things get interesting because I have a sneaking suspicion there's just going to be this massive surge of players available for free transfers, um, which could have a massive, massive knock-on effect for the whole of world football. And indeed, it might impact how good PSG are because they're going to be sacrificing so many of their good players. That is going to be something very interesting to see next time out. As always, if you have enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Part 3 will be coming your way very, very soon. As I already mentioned, we will include a save game when that part drops. So if you want to have a sift through all this lovely data yourself, you can absolutely do that. PSG, still very good. The world of football is an absolute shambles. I can't wait to see how it plays out in the next few years. And well, until then, it is me, Jack, and I'll see you all on the next one. I'm out.